Okay, now I think now finally we're good to go. Thanks a lot for the organization for um, uh, the team that, that is taking care of the video and the, um, and the mic. They have been uh, rushing to get everything in time. And so we're good to go. Uh, my name is Pablo. Um, I, am, I am one of the Netfield maintainers and I'm going to be making a quick summary of, of the hot topics that we've been discussing recently. Um, as I will show you, I have to get this, yes. So um, I will be talking about the recent patch uh, that is uh, going to be submitted upstream soon um, to support for inner header um, matching, then talk about the NF tables uh, rule optimizer. Uh, make a summary on some ongoing effort to, to add support for string matching. And finally, a quick summary of what we have, what, what we have been discussing on the NetFilter the workshop that happened in Thursday on last week on Thursday and Friday. It was two days, small event uh, oriented to uh, mostly to the core team and, and contributors. So let's start by the inner header matching. So, um, the basically the goals of the inner header matching is to allow users to match on on what uh, uh, tunnel protocols like VXLAN, uh, GRE, GRE tab, uh, GNEV, and so on. And GRE um, encapsulate allow users to match on, on on basically the if they if they if they are conveying uh, link layer header allows to match on that Ethernet header or the network layer or transport or so it's targeted at protocols that don't do not encapsulate do not encrypt uh, data and data is is um, is plain text so um, the goal is also to reuse the existing bytecode generation so any fix to the to to any to any of the machinery that we have the, basically the compiler that we have in, in use space to to generate the bytecode is um is also going to is also going to propagate to the, this infrastructure so we, we don't have basically two different paths of two code paths to to generate by code just uh, probably a few branches just to do something special in case that they that some um tunnel decorator that we have that specifies that this is actually not matching on the outer header but the inner header um so it just uh generates the right by code on um, and then the um, so to to reuse all this the existing infrastructure basically the kernel has to calculate the new offset because netfield and, and nf tables rely on on some pre-calculated net uh, offsets that are the link layer and network network header and transport offsets to to generate expressions and to match on at a given offset and then fetch data from there and then make comparisons to generate the bytecode basically so uh, this new inner expression has to um uh, parse the um uh, the tunnel header and the inner header and set those offsets and and it all it is also um it is also assisting uh tunnel protocol headers uh, it, it is the kernel is assisting so it's it both user space and and the kernel are cooperating user space provides a descriptions a very simple descriptions of 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 the tunnel protocol that description consists of a tunnel header, the link layer. Uh, if if the tunnel protocol encapsulates a, a pro provides a link layer header, because some some protocols do, some others not. Uh, if also if the network header is available, because there are protocols that, for example. So in that case, only transport header would be available. So so basically, user space is providing a description through flags. To, to tell the kernel that um, this is what I expect. Also, a fixed size for the header, and then we res resort on the kernel to to um, to deal with a, um, um, a optional optional fields coming in Geneva or GRE or uh, um, VXLAN GPE or any other. Just to keep it simple, uh, a kernel is assisting on on the parsing. So. <clears throat> So user space provide this is this description. You have few examples there. So it's basically for VXLAN is uh, this is going to come with its own tunnel header. Then it's going to come the encapsulated Ethernet frame comes with link layer, network uh, header, and transport header. Then uh, for Geneva, there is also tunnel header coming. It's exactly the same definition. Just only the fixed header size is changing. 
And then GRE, it's only uh, classic GRE is expecting to have network header and transport header. GRE tab, which is basically the name that um, in the Linux kernel have the MB GRE, right? So it's um, link layer network header transport offset. And then IP IP, which is network header transport offset. So depending on the tunnel protocol you want to um, support and just extend, you, you only have to extend the user space with that description and then updating user space should be possible to support a new tunnel protocol. Depending on the tunnel protocol, you might need some small kernel patch also to deal with uh, parsing options. So a different topic is how to match on those optional fields and I will discuss that in one of the slides. So how does this work? So <clears throat> basically the idea is that the tunnel expression, which is a new instruction for the specialized NF tables uh, virtual machine, is going to embed the existing meta and payload expressions. And so those two expressions um, are going to uh, use one special new option, which, which is defined in, in the kernel, which is inner ops, which, which basically uh, tells how to behave in cooperation with the inner expression. And um, we are going to be emulating only two meta fields at this point. It should be possible to emulate more for the inner expression that is uh, L4 protocol, which is commonly used to generate dependencies. And also we are going to be uh, emulating the protocol one, which provides the ether type of the, um, of the packet. In this case, it will be the ether type of the encapsulated packet coming 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 in um, coming over the the tunnel protocol. So um, the inner payload expression is going to use the inner offset that have been pre-calculated by the by the inner parser, and that's it. And then is a direct call uh, for the specialized even function of the meta and uh, payload expressions um, in in the inner in the inner flavor and um, user space is just going to generate by code using the new, the new not meta, that's a mistake, the, the new, the new uh, inner expression when, when it comes to matching to, to inner tunnel protocols. That's it. I'll show you um, an example in the next slide that is also, yes, um, the, the, the way the NFT compiler uh, works is just, um, it's exactly using the same abstract syntax tree, but there is just some decorator to say that there is, uh, this is actually matching on the inner header, not the outer header. So all the, um, all the bytecode, all the logic to generate bytecode is going to be basically the same. So this is how it looks. There's some very simple example with a super classic uh, rule just to match on BXLAN. IP, IP uh, source address. Um, you have to restrict VXLAN matching to UDP explicitly to UDP report, and then you have you, you can specify the port you want, but you have to restrict VXLAN matching to UDP. So otherwise, the the NFT tool is going to complain about. So um, these are basically expressions that are. This one is automatically automatically generated by by the UDP matching. It's just restricting matching to UDP, these two are restricting for the uh, um, destination UDP protocol. And then this is where the inner expression comes in, which is, um, um, it is using the, the type VLAN, VXLAN, which is a decorator to say what kind of type, what, what kind of tunnel is being used. It's also going to be useful for, for hardware, when, when the hardware offload is supported. Just to, get, to give a hint to the, to the kernel. This is the, the, the header size of the VXLAN protocol, the fixed size header, which is eight bytes. And these are the simple flags that provide the descriptions of, of the VXLAN protocol. So, so um, and in this case, this is telling just pre-calculate those inner offsets and, and anything that needs to be ready to match on inner packets. The first time this is going to be a store in a per CPU data area and then recycled. So the parsing only happens only happens once, and then the meta load protocol it's just actually matching on on the inner ether type of of um, the encapsulated packet, and in this case it's going to be IP. And then the next two um, instructions are basically again invoking the inner expression, but in this case it's just going to fetch four bytes of the network header 
at offset, uh, offset uh, 12, and then place it down on that register, and then comparing that it, has, it is actually the, the IP source uh, address that we are willing to match. So this is a super simple one. You know, NF tables have support for maps and concatenation, which is, is, is it is what is it is making it scale up. Um, basically, linear rules that are that people should not be resorting to a linear rule set anymore. I mean, um, and that that that's something that we have discussed in the NetFit workshop too. That we probably need to provide a bit more documentation on that mindset update, right? So, not think about rules anymore, but start thinking more about how you arrange your rule sets on using sets and maps, right? So, but that's a different topic. Anyway, um, coming back to the inner expression. Um, so as I said, the kernel is assisting uh, packet parsing to pre-calculate the offsets for the case of GRE and G Genevi. That is kernel code, it's just very good code. Um, it should be possible to provide a more advanced description with some generic parsing, but I did not want to overdo just Kernel is cooperating, and it's just very little code. And if someone needs to support some new protocol, new new tunnel protocol with um, optional headers, then just some add some small patch to the kernel. So future work is there are people already asking for, as I said, if it would be possible to match on, for example, Geneva, ha Geneva has optional um, optional TLDs coming after the fixed size header. So some people would like to match on that. It should be possible to teach NFT extension header. It's another instruction that we have in the NF tables virtual machine, um, just to deal with that. And um, payload mangling for a stateless NAT, just for example, to do load balancing, just taking the VXLAN packet and mangling the packet just to decide where it has to go. And the next question is obviously the stateful filtering, how to do that. And, because that is also a useful feature, right? So, well, I did not say this at the beginning, but the goal is basically just to avoid all those round trips that we currently have, because we could do this with IP tables, right? And, and the existing approach is just to take the VXLAN packet, decapsulate, and then reinject and so on. But that in, tw in, tw uh, in 2022, that might make no sense. It's too much, uh, too many cycles to spend on that. So the early we perform the action on the packet without decapsulating, just the better. So um, in summary, currently in the, in the patch that I have ready, uh, it's coming with support for, for tunneling protocols. It's VXLAN, Univi, GRE, and GRE tap. More to come. Some of them only require updates in the user space. And, um, and all of them support for the, all, all, the, all the existing features, which, which is mainly concatenation sets and maps. And uh, that includes crazy things like combining inner, inner fields matching with outer fields and all the things that if you already start using advanced features in NF tables, uh, you can also do, okay? So all the flexibility is already there. This is a few more examples just to have a look at the syntax. How does this look from user space? The three initial items that are just showing how to match on source is the net address, um, IP source address, um, also VLAN is also possible to match on. This is a crazy requirement, a crazy uh, requirement from someone that is not uh, in the kernel community anymore, but he told me something like four years ago, something like uh, uh, someone is asking to match on VLAN or VXLAN. It's super crazy, but it would be good. It's also possible and reusing the existing byte code generation. So it was quite natural to support that. And all this can be combined, as I said, with concatenations. Now you have a simple concatenation example in this case, just building a uh, tuple with VXLAN, IPv source address, and VXLAN destination address. Um, this example is a bit more detailed, and it's basically defining a hell table at, at the, for the NetApp family. It's an, it's an ingress hook chain, what you can see there, there here below. And um, this is basically just, just as the previous example, but matching on a name name set. Um, is it also possible to use this with dynamic sets? So you could you could, you could just populate a set from runtime. This kind of feature is not, um, for example, it's not available in IP set. It, it would require quite a lot of effort to to support it because it's quite specialized on 
on um, the data types that, that, that they can handle, right? So in this case, it's, oh, this is working, or if it's not working, just let me know and I will fix it. Next topic is the NF tables rule optimizer. As I said, one of the main problems that probably we are facing is that, they are, as I said, my mindset change when using NF tables is that you have to start thinking about maps and sets and concatenations and how to combine all that that that, that, that expressivity that we know, that expressiveness that we, we did not have with IP tables, right? So um, so one way to, to help the users to, to do better usage of the existing uh, capabilities is just to provide automatic transformation of your existing rule set. So just let's say you're moving from IP tables to NF tables. So then what you do is you translate your rule set that is already uh, that, that feature is already available, right? And then after translating your rule set, then you could run NFT uh, with the optimized option to, to see if NFT NF tables is going to start suggesting some, some improvements. And, and so, so you, you, you start understanding the, the new semantics that are available, right? So, so people uh, get to know to the new features, right? So um, that is, there is also another, this is also targeting our auto-generated rules. There are plenty of tools auto-generating IP tables rules these days, right? And it's it can be quite a lot of effort. So you, what you could do is just translate your rules from IP tables and then run this. And if it's auto-generated, it's going to try to pack your rules to something that is more, much more optimal. And then with the goal is that if the if we teach the the optimizer to be smart enough, um, um, it re reduce uh, not not put that not not, not expect um, teams that are migrating to do all that work, right? Not 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 expect them to use NFT natively, right? So just keep keep the rules the linear rule set and and use this option. So there is also the optimize is it's working runtime. That means that it's going to optimize. It's going to tell you what has been optimized, and then push that rule set to the kernel. And but there is a dry run, dry run mode, which is this uh, minus minus check, which allows you to, without actually loading the rule set to use space to, to kernel space, um, it's going to tell you what what has been transformed. So because some people just like to not to do this automatically but see what the tool is suggesting and then apply that to the rule set. So it's, it's, it's going to be always there, okay? So as I said, the main advantage, the main performance boost come from user set maps concatenation. So this is what this tool is all about. How does this work? It's basically done after the parsing and the evaluation phase. If, if, if you look at the, at the uh, NFT pipeline, Compiler pipeline is basically basically first parsing that is going to construct, that is going to build the abstract syntax tree. And then from that syntax tree, evaluation is going to be performed, basically just to make sure that what has been parsed makes sense. So just um, And then uh, also uh, interpret the data values that have been uh, uh, taken from, from as input and then finally generate the bytecode and that bytecode is going to be pushed in the kernel. This is, this is the one direction, right? So between this is going to happen between parsing and evalu evaluation. The op this optimizer is taking the parsing, making the transformation, and then passing passing that to the to the evaluation phase. Um, it's two stages. Uh, internally, it's already triggering a run a dry run. So even if you don't specify minus check, why that? Because I just wanted to make sure that the tool is not making some transformation that the kernel is not going to, to accept. So, so um, and um, so it's, if you run, if you run, um, yeah, and, and steps, um, the algorithm to optimize, uh, it's, it's starting first step is to collect all the expressions, the expressions are the matches, basically. And it's building a, a matrix of, uh, the matches and the rules, right? For the comparison to see what can be squashed. Um, uh, the first one is just first collect collect the matches, then build the, the the matrix, and then after building the matrix, it's going to look for common selectors. The algorithm is quite brute force at this stage; it's it's exponential, which is not super good. But I, I was not focusing at this stage on getting it faster. 
but um, but to to make it to make it correct to make it work to fix bugs and then get people to start using it and report report uh, report issues right or suggest new optimizations if they find one so so that's not the goal at this stage but it should be possible to speed it up and anyway this is also run from control plane so it's not super critical to so it's not it was not a priority so um, then after looking at common selectors. Um, in fact, how to match the, the rules and then print the transformation proposal that I had uh, for, for the user. So um, what kind of transformations? Uh, oh, yes, before that, um, supported actions that was in, in IP tables jargon is targets, right? So supported actions at this stage are verdict, counter, no track, log, not, and reject. That means that if your, if your rule has something that is not that action, the, the optimizer doesn't know how to optimize that yet. Um, and there is another requirement that is that you have to, in a has, has, uh, has two notations. One notation is the nested notation, which is basically with, with curly braces and you have table, you have to define a top level table object and then chain and then um, rules, right? And in this case, you have to use the, net, the nested notation, the linear notation, which is not nested, which is basically add, uh, table x add uh, chain y add rule w that is not supported yet, but it su should be possible to, to to support that too, which is convenient for uh, to optimize incremental rules and updates, right? And um, this is now yes, I'm going to show you the supported rule set optimizations at this um, at this stage. So um, is it possible? This one is rather simple and, and it's basically, if you have two rules uh, using one single uh, uh, selector, it can be all this can be squashed into an implicit set. The optimi optimizer so far is relaying on, on um, implicit set a lot. It should be possible, as I said, uh, as I will tell you uh, later um, in, an, in, in one of the next slides, it should be possible to uh, also to, to use um, name sets for that, which might be convenient if the number of rules that I squash is very large and just not to create a super bloated implicit set. Um, what else? Uh, this one is a bit more complex because it's combining basically uh, concatenations uh, and, um, and a set. So, in this case, you have rules just matching on different IP address, and it's going. It's also it is also matching on different max value on the packet. Action uh, is actually the same, so it's just squashing that into a. This is a concatenation, so you have to, these two selectors, and then you have the um, the possible values that are defined in, in in the set, and then the common the common uh, action is just coming after the this set definition. Um, and it is also possible to merge uh, rules that have different verdicts using the verdict map. So in this case, the rules, um, if you, um, so basically it's, it's, it is the same selector, but only the action is changing. Uh, it might look very silly, but you can find rules like, like this. Uh, there is a number of GitLab, GitHub repositories with IP tables, public IP table rule sets that can be is very useful, and and some of them are using IP tables in a very simplistic way. Some people are even, for example, just blacklisting. Or oh, I think it's failed to ban support pure pure blacklisting with IP tables without IP set, right? So, in that case, it should be very it should be super easy to 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 invoke the optimizer to to squash all that. So. This is also supported with the vertical map, and and one more optimization that is supported is. This one that is basically same as before, but with several uh, selectors of the same kind and different different actions. In this case, it, there is here a concatenation, and then vertically map, and and then you have a map. You don't have a set anymore. You have this is what is going to be match expressed as a concatenation, and then finally the action to be performed. Um, it is also possible to match uh, not rules quite common to do, um, um, it is quite common to have lots of NAT rules. Um, that is also people doing, um, 
I forgot the acronym. Anyway, so it's lots of it's lots of it's not rules coming one after another. Just use a a map to represent this. In this case, the source NAT is going to depend on the IP source address address, and then matching it's matching on this, and this is the the source address that is going to be used for for source NAT. So that's, I found this in many road sets. So, and this you can also combine with, if you have multiple selectors, it's going to just combine maps with concatenations and then you get uh, basically O1, O1 to decide what source address is going to be used for, for NAT. So, so that's basically, um, what we have for the NFT load optimizer at this stage, there is room to improve it. So far, uh, in the most recent release, there have been fixes still. Uh, so it's basically in the latest minor uh, revisions of NFT tables user space. It's been, um, it's been, it's been most of the updates have been fixing books. So if you want to test this feature, I really recommend to use latest. Um, it should be possible to post optimizations with name sets. As I said, if, if the set is super, it's getting, if you're squashing, packing lots of rules, and then you are going to have a very large implicit set, it should be possible to use um, uh, name sets. Uh, it's not supported yet, but I would like probably the next optimization that I'm going to do, introduce is that it's quite common to find in auto-generated rules there's lots of, um, uh, let's say source address matching and then some rate limit, and then you get a large list of rate limits, one per IP address or just. So in that case, it should be possible to optimize that again using using a set, or depending on what you have, also use uh, vertical maps and and um, just to to let rate limits scale up. Uh, it should be also possible to speed up transformation, but as I said, not super priority at this stage because this is run from control plane, so allow to match non-consecutive rules, which is a request from several users already. Uh, the, the, uh, the approach to, um, to coalize the rules is quite, it's not super smart, it's quite silly, just checking for consecutive rules. So it should be possible also to, for rules that are not exactly consecutive to, to match them too. And, and yes, this is something that has been requested is to, provo to, to provide more verbose explanations of the transformation that has been made. Because some people have been running trans the transformation and they say, I don't understand why this transformation has been applied, right? So just probably the, what, what we will do is just point to some link on the NF tables wiki page, just to say, if you want to learn more about this, this optimization or to get more information on what has happened here, just click here and then you get there and you will get an article explaining or what has happened, right? So, okay. So next topic is this is ongoing effort to support for string matching in tables. So um, the problem again is linear rules and um, linear rules and matching uh, in IP tables. There are two two type of algorithms that can be used: Bollier Moore and Knut Pratt Morris for string matching. And um, there is actually one match whose name is FSM, if I remember correctly, it's fast strict matching, which is not actually super fast, but it has his, that name. So, um, and then the idea is just to use a, a, a whole Corasage implementation. It's rather small. It's just uh, six, uh, almost 1700 lines of code. I sent an RFC batch set in July. And this is allowing to match on a, on a search for the needle in the stack. Basically, you have a collection of patterns and search for a matching in them all in one go. Otherwise, with Bojan Moore, for example, that would require just one pass on the packet for this pattern, another pass on the, on the packet for pattern B, another pass on the packet for pattern C, and that is not, not the way to go. So, um, so just find the needle in the stack in in one go, having multiple lots of needles, right? So it's a tree, and I use quotes because it's, a, it's actually not a tree, it's a graph, but the original paper refers to it as a tree. So I'm keeping the semantics of the original authors, right? So it's actually a graph. It is tested in user space. It is, it is generating random text, um, random pattern generation. Um, it's been sanitized with background and ASAN to search for 
um, memory is handling. It is fully lockless, and it just consumes 150 megabytes for three for with a dictionary of um, less than 400,000 words. Um, maximum pattern size at this at this stage is 128 bytes because it's, it, it it determines the um, how deep the, the tree goes. Um, I just cap cap it to that value. Um, and then a string match stops at the shortest shortest match. So you have several words with the same uh, prefix. It's just going to tell you it's going to stop at the at the first one that is shortest. And um, the note in the tree are using um, one of the data structures. It's, it's, it's AC state. AC state has one field which is output, which is the number of bytes that has been matched, and this represents a matching. So if you if you get to AC 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 state node, it means with with an output field, it means that um, I found a matching and then I can stop searching. Uh, there is a fail transition just in case of mismatch, uh, and then there is an array of states, which is which is the edge array, which is indexed by the pattern value and it's telling me where to go next in search. Um, resizing, um, it's resized, this array is resized on demand, and what's, what's case is as many, is the index is one byte, so what's case is 256 position. It can be a lot of memory um, in practice, uh, in, but in practice, um, in practice, I mean, at least for the dictionary I've used, it, it was not so, so bad. Um, a, there is a state which is actually the AC state. Finally, it's basically the AC state with no H array. And then there is one object which is the tree itself, which basically has a root which is a AC state, and initially with a number of pre-allocated slots in the H array. And then it got a stack because in the kernel recursive, recursive calls are not good to have. So all the iterations that happen that need to be done in the in the um, in the data structure for deletion and iterations uh, use this scratch pad area, uh, which is local to the tree. And um, yes, and to update the tree, basically the approach is um, NF tables comes with a with transaction semantics. So uh, that means that there is a preparation, it's two-phase commit protocol, so there is a preparation phase and then a commit phase. Uh, what, what it happens when you want to update dynamically these, these data structure is that the, the, the tree, the, 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 the data structure is going to be cloned and, and then update your work on the working copy. And then once really if, if that uh, preparation phase leads to commit, not to abort phase, then the the old data structure is going to be replaced by by the new one. Uh, there is a new new string netting API. I was trying to explore before final submission if I can get this into the existing state API. It was slightly complicated initially. I'm going to re I would like to revisit this uh, again, and if and spend a bit more time if it turns turns too complicated, maybe it's just convenient to have a different API specialized for strings just to not get, not to overload the, the existing set map API with, with more features and getting more complex, just trading off to with the API to not get it too, too bad. And, and there is a string map support for NS table. There is a new instruction in the specialized virtual machine, which is the, the NFT string. Um, for multi-search on the escape buff, it takes the string set, which is basically the dictionary of words that you want to search. And then you just have to specify a payload base. That was another limitation on IP tables uh, that is starting actually a network, a network layer, which was, which was confusing to the users because it's, it is also including um, IP and transport header. Now you, you can specify what is the base. And there is inner header, which is possible to do too. And it should be possible to add also to combine this with the previous inner, inner header expression to, to look deeper in, in, in one tunnel packet that is not supported yet. You have to specify the offset of the stand matching from the end in case that you don't want to search for the pattern in the entire packet. And then just some destination register to 
<clears throat> currently there is only one flag that says if the, the, that uh, just to, to check if there is one pattern in the dictionary that is found. But as I, as I will show you in the next slide, it should be possible also to return the, the offset and more more fancy stuff. So so far only only tells if in this collection of words if there is a matching. Yes, no, that's all I can do. But um, it should be possible to combine this with maps with a stable ex uh, ex sta stateful expressions, which is something that people have been asking already in some private email I received. That it should be possible to do that. I don't know what they want to do with that, but they want it. So I will have a look, and there is also the catch-all fallback in sets, which is basically the start, right? The asterisk in case of no matching, do something else. And extensions to be done is just teach NFT string to identify uh, what pattern has been found. Just store in the register some pattern ID. To say what I have found is pattern ID number X, and and also where, just the offset. Right, or where that has been found, in case that you, for example, want to dump the packet and for logging. And and uh, most of the work that I've done, it's been using only, it's been a dating kernel and libnftnl. And I've been making libnftnl programs, so NFT still needs to be updated to to support for all these features. So it is this is ongoing work. Um, now I'm going to talk about a summary of the NFT workshop. That, as I said, has, uh, we've, uh, it's an event that happened last week on on uh, Thursday and Friday, two days. It was actually, we are, next workshop we will do it three days because I, I, I thought, I thought that because of the pandemic before the um, before this meeting, we have a two days meeting and it was only fully online. And that, that is, uh, that was already, we thought that was already a lot, but meeting in person, there is more occasion to talk. Right, so so next time we'll do it three days. Two days was too short. It's just very sh small event, core team plus plus contributor. This time it was um, eight people, and um, and basically what we discussed, the main topics that we discussed were uh, container how to improve container support with IP tables NFT, which is basically the um, IP tables frontends that using that is using already NF tables, right, to to generate rules. And one one tricky scenario um, that took quite a lot of discussion was, uh, let's say we have container A that is using IP table NFT and it is it is using revision X plus one or generating let's say some bytecode that uh, container V has an older older version of IP tables and does not know how to interpret. So it's super tricky because it means that we are actually requiring that all IP tables or all IP tables versions know how to interpret what new NF IP tables versions can do, which is actually to me it's forward compatibility, right? It's like you would like that all IP tables version know how to interpret what future versions <laughs> um, are generating, which is as I said difficult. But we we came up, it was an idea from Florian, and basically we will use this as a last resort resort which is basically just and on there is a user data area in the rule and if if the old version does not manage to decode the rule set from a step that is the linearization step what we call it is basically when when listing we fetch the rule set and then we build the abstract syntax it's some abstract syntax tree again and then we do some post processing which is similar to the evaluation but from from the listing phase and then finally print the rule set, right? So if we if the tool cannot interpret the bytecode, just print we are going to be storing the the original syntax in some area. It's last resort. There is no we didn't we didn't come up with any better way to support for to to forecast what future how the future is going to look like, but it seems in this crazy container scenario it's a requirement to support that all tools interpret future things, right? So, so it's it's falling back on that only in case that that happens. So the goal is basically not to break things for the users. Uh, Florian, uh, he will be presenting uh, now in the remaining minutes. So um, he will be talking about his efforts to blend EBPF with Netflutter. 
So one of the use cases that have been, he has been exploring is basically how to remove indirect calls in, in hooks using eBPF to transform them to direct calls that in case that you have in case that you have in, you, in your servers, the, the, the uh, red pole line mitigation is enabled, it can be quite costful, right? So, so turning in, into direct calls is convenient in that case. And then also checking how to, uh, how to add general eBPF support to NF tables. Um, and so far, it's either from, from the hook or either or adding a new, a new instruction from, for the specialized virtual machine. NF tables virtual machine just to invoke EVPF from there. That's, or probably support both. Um, and a sorted number of topics that we'll be discussing is basically deprecate the RB3. Um, we have several uh, set representations, um, backend representations. Uh, we have hash, dif different flavors of hash for exact matching. We have range, uh, RB3s that are, be, are used for, for matching on ranges. And that is another set that has a funny name in German, which is Pipapo, which is the set that can basically do anything else that can combine ranges or concatenations. Um, and NF tables pick the backend based on the this description of the set that the user provides, right? So it's not that all the implementations detail are, exp are, are exposed to user space. That allows us to do what we would like to do, which is deprecate the RB3 by using Pipapo, which is more, it's more expressive than the RB3 and it shouldn't be too much work according to Stefano Vibrio, that is the, or the author of Pipapo. It shouldn't be too hard to make, um, to, 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 to get the same numbers, same performance numbers uh, with Pipapo to, to achieve the same functionality that uh, the RB3 provides. So it would be, um, uh, in, in, the, in, the cho in the mid term, it will allow us to get rid of one set backend and and maintain less code in the kernel. Uh, what else? There is more things uh, we, we, we have been discussing. Also, how to reduce memory footprint in user space for NF tables because uh, there are some users willing to, for example, uh, load super large, not super, well, re relatively large uh, block lists or white li uh, or, or white list on 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 very small boxes, only with 128 megabytes. And they were hit, they were hitting the the limits in in for the NFT user uh, memory consumption, and the reason is that that set elements depending on how complex they are. If you have maps and you have ranges and you have uh, many other things, they can they can consume up to seven seven hundred uh, bytes, or in some cases even one kilobyte, which is quite a lot. And there are, there is room to to reduce that memory consumption. To um, to be able to by only updating user space to to make NF tables um, to reduce memory footprint in NF tables. There is also there have been discussions on how to run a new command. This is going to be the new NF destroy command. Semantics are similar to flush, but it's it doesn't fail if the if the object does not exist. So, so yes, you say destroy table blah, and if that table does not exist. Um, it just keep going, which is good to for the transaction semantics that we have. So because of the transaction semantics, all the things in the batch either have to success, succeed or fail, right? And with the flash, if you do flash table X and that flash and that table does not exist, the transaction is is aborted. And so it's convenient to have, there are use cases where it, it is convenient to have this command. And also, we spent some time talking about load balancing. There is a tool, which is NFTLD, which is uh, developed by Laura. And it's basically uh, generating rule sets with, as, as with maps to, um, for the classic, the classic load balancer scenarios, including including uh, NAT based or also uh, DSR and how to do that with any tables. Um, you could do that just creating your rules yourself, but this NFTLB is sitting between, between libnf lib, lib tables and it provides another more simplified API, very focused on load balancers and then it, it is generating the rule sets just in case you want to explore. And that's basically all what I have. 
if there is some time left, um, Florian. So I think, yes, we are running off time. So I'll leave the remaining time for questions. In case you have any questions, please let me know. And questions might come also from the internet, right? So it should be. Okay, so if no question, I think we are fine to, okay. When you say the tree was a graph, you think there was some... Yeah. Yeah, in case of, in case of, um, um, in case, for example, you have, you have one pattern and you have um, some uh, soup string in, in that pattern. So you start searching, I don't know, let's say um, potato, right? And you also have Dough, right? And then you start. If you find in when when searching for the match, you stand. You find P O T, okay, and no P O and then X, okay. Then you have to roll back. In that case, it's it's easy because it's the first. But if you are moving ahead, it's you are matching. Let's say P O T, potato without the E, yes X. Then you have to go back because you have toe too. Right, so you have to. It, it shouldn't say mismatch for that. So, so it's dealing with that, with that, with that situation. Yes. Um, hi. Um, so thank you for the talk. I have uh, two very basic questions, maybe. Uh, the first one is um, I'm not so aware about NFT LB, but what's the difference between uh, this approach to load balance and IPVS? Yeah, um, IPVS, IPVS was fully designed to, to be a load balancer. So since the beginning, the use case was to to extend the kernel to have a subsystem that is specialized on the load balancing. And NF tables is a generic packet classifier. So, and it got instructions such as hash, sim hash, um, number generation for incremental uh, sequential number generation, and, and also random, the random instruction that just give you a random number. And you can restrict that to some uh, mod operation, and then you can define the action based on that. So, so the, the NF tables instruction set is uh, it's, uh, it's allowing you to define rules that that you could use to to load balance traffic actually. So, and there is also, for example, for DSR, it might be convenient to mangle the destination R destination ARP address, right? The Ethernet address. So all that with with um, with rules you could you could make yourself and the nft lb is just providing an abstraction to so you don't have to figure out the rules you have to do for the different uh, load balancing scenario but you just take the demo and just say i want to load balance i want to do dsr right and so it's going to do it for you and at the same time if you don't want to use nft lb you could also you could just check the rules that it generates you, you get an idea and you don't have to figure out by yourself what how, how to build that rule set there there is a folder in NFTLB also that shows examples of the of generated different rule sets for different scenarios than, that you could also recycle if you want to remove one layer of abstraction. So, uh, from from a user perspective, do they provide different load balancing algorithms? Like uh, one of them, like maybe both of them can load balance depending on source IP, maybe source. Uh, so sport or whatever. Do yes. they provide different uh, approaches for load balancing? Or basically, uh, if I just need to load balance uh, traffic on L or L3 or L4, they pretty the same in functionality, like which algorithms they can, can use. Yeah, I mean, it should be possible to use any any selector to, to decide the criteria to, to load balance. So you have all the all the expressiveness, expressiveness that NF tables provide in that regard. So it's not, 
and and IPVS is more is more like in that sense it's more like IP tables and IP set that is restricted to where the common selectors at the time uh, probably 10 years or 20 years ago when all this was where this was designed right and if in in this case it's you, you could use any potentially in any field in your packet or even stateful information that is available to decide where to go okay got it thank you and uh, the second question is uh, regarding uh, string matching uh, extension is there any chance uh, to have a string matching which can expand uh, between two packets maybe using uh, um, contracts or something like that so like if you want to match a pattern on the bounds of the packets you definitely need to have some flow information on this stage is there any prototypes any work or any idea ideas about, about this yeah that's a good that's a good use case indeed um yeah and it's, it's usually a requirement yeah it should be possible to, to support that it's just that we will need to to store uh, some stateful information on on from where we are, right? So next packet can pick up from from the middle, right? From the middle of a, a pending search, right? So so uh, storing storing the state should be pretty simple for a whole classic or any uh, fine state machine. Just just uh, store where, where you are on the state state machine. But I I think it's more uh, sophisticated to. Uh, handle packet flows. For example, when, when on Netflix you have just a bunch of packets uh, without any flow information. So you need to decide whether there's some, um, this is the same flow, like a TCP flow, UDP flow, whatever. And uh, moreover, uh, probably since if you need to, uh, uh, need to match patterns on the packets bounds, you ha have to solve the issues of IP packets overlapping or TCP overlapping, for That's example. Right. So this uh, trivial techniques for uh, intrusion detection right. avoidance and, and so on. So I, I'm wondering, like, is there some research or any work in this uh, direction? Because um, I think the topic is very, very old. Yeah, yeah, it's super this. old and it's super extensive, and there, are, there is a lot of um, um, uh, literature in that regard, right? So, yeah. so I, th I see more these pattern matches as, as some, some pre, pre classifier, you know? So it's just it's kind of a fast path, like, like just try to find these according to the, uh, what I've defined in the, in the policy. And, and then that packet that is, uh, let's, let's say, let's cut, let's, um, classify packets are uh, gray, I don't know, right? Or it's white, which is okay. And then, Let's say some other color to say this bad, right? So and then, and then you you get um, you get to the side. It, it can be that I try to find if packet is clean or, or okay for from from the kernel with the NF tables classification. If I don't know, just hand it over to user space, right? So for deeper inspection with more capabilities with any of the IDS that are. So it's not the purpose to have full IDS in in the kernel with this, but just have some. Let's say try to classify this, and 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 if you can save cycles, not passing packets to use the space for deeper inspections, then it's always good. It is always good, right? Mm -hmm. So this can, if you, I'm not talking about the flow table uh, support, but combined with that idea, you can also you could just. Um, start searching for what to do with the packet. I can do it in kernel, good. Then I just add an entry to the flow table. So next packet, just follow, they follow a fast path. So basically by, by passing the classic warning path, right? So if I don't know what to do from kernel, then I pass it to user space. User space will decide, no, please keep sending me packets. So I send and then they decide, okay, and then feed the flow table to say what to do. And at some point, something like that, like I, I guess that the best approach in that regard is to have a multi-level architecture when you try to decide the sooner the better, right? And if you cannot, just re uh, resort on what the, mo the most powerful but the most CPU-consuming intensive um, intensive software, right? Which is in user space these days. I mean, that's okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. I think we are running out of, out of, out of time, right?
it's three minutes, three minutes still. In case you have some late questions, otherwise, good. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be around, so just let me know.